roll down the windows. It's a bit steamy in here. Off we go. I got my windows down. It's a bit kind of cloudy, but it's just 48 degrees, so it's great. Good grief. It's very foggy looking out the front window. I'm not very... What are you supposed to do when that starts to happen? Like when the f windows fog up, what are you supposed to do? Because I've got I've got the the defogger on now. And maybe that's what I'm supposed to do because it seems to be helping. So, anyways, welcome back to another episode of the commute. I am in the M3 once again. Are you fucking serious? There. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the commute. We are in the E46 M3 once again, and. We're on our way to work. I have no idea how much of the footage was ruined by the by the camera falling down. Maybe I need to stiffen up the, the joints of the actual camera mount. It is uh, 52 degrees according to the car. Um, and it's just wet and I, I love it. It's not icy or snowy. These tires are suddenly practical again. Oh, it feels so good to be driving. It feels so, so good. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. So two things I want to talk about today. You've already kind of, this won't be the title of the video, but I just want to quickly clear up things with the whole R34 uh, 25 GT GTT video I made, uh, the vlog. Um, yes, I am considering getting one of those cars, but no, it's not a permanent car. And here are the reasons why. From like almost a business standpoint um, and a personal standpoint, I want to get a non-GTR Skyline for the following four reasons. The first being that it's um, it's cheap, but it could be really cool for content, um, like showing you guys what you can do with a non-GTR Skyline, because not everyone can afford a GTR anymore. Um, you know, they're not affordable at the $60,000, $70,000 range anymore. Um, they're going, like, base GTRs are more than 130 grand. So that's, that's one reason. Uh, the second reason is that it's not, permanent it's a temporary car so I can sell it once I'm ready to get a full-fledged GTR what the f mother -fucker. there now that feels stiff hold on let me just open my answer and I replied to uh, someone's comment uh, with my list of reasons why so the reasons why I want to get uh, a non GTR skyline first is that it's cheaper um, it still can appreciate and it's great for content um, So that makes it uh, very likely to be profitable two is it's temporary um, By 2024 or 2027 I would sell it for an actual full-fledged GTR of whatever kind I can afford Third is you know, it's a cool way to uh, show you guys what can be done with a non GTR skyline uh, because not everyone can afford a full GTR now. They're not affordable at the $60,000, $70,000 range anymore. Um, so that's a cool thing. And I had a fourth reason, but I can't remember it. But those are the main reasons. Like, it's it's just, uh, it just seems like a really good choice. I can experience the rear-wheel drive. And it's also because, you know, I would build it differently to how I'd build a GTR. Like, I would build a GTR to have CUS body kit, and a whole bunch of other things, whole nine yards, Stroker RB26. But with a uh, non-GTR Skyline, I'd make it look more like a, a standard GTR with like a couple of Nismo parts and much more of what would be considered the typical fanboy clean build. Um, and I know a lot of people like the way that looks. And so I'd probably go with something like that um, for the GTT build. And I think it would look good next to the M3 GTR. But now anyways, that was that's gonna be awkward to edit, but. Now let's talk about the M3 GTR for a second. This car right here, which is going to become the M3 GTR. I was doing a little bit of research into gearboxes, you know, so once we do the exhaust, which is very soon, once we do that, um, then we'll do the body kit and wheels and suspension and stuff. This car is an SMG car, um, but it won't be SMG forever. And I thought, you know, what gearboxes could we put in this car? At first I thought, you know, the S54 with like a BMW M4 dual clutch could be kind of cool, but that might be a little complicated to get all of the, uh, the computers to work together. So then I thought, okay, so what about aftermarket stuff? There's X-Track, Hollinger, and Drenth. The one, those are the main three I've looked at so far. X-Track being the most expensive because they put, they make gearboxes for Pagani Quiras and GT racing cars. So that's out of my price range because a gearbox from them is like 
$80,000. So that's not really in the price range um, of what I am wanting to do with this car because that would be a waste of money on a car that's primarily a street car. Hollinger would be up next with twenty dollars to $30,000 in terms of price. Um, still kind of out of my price range. So my plan is to use a Hollinger gearbox for when we do an engine swap because that'll make more sense because their, 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 their gearboxes can handle a good amount of abuse and torque. So what I'm thinking is we get a Drenth uh, six-speed sequential gearbox, straight cut gears for the time being while we have the inline six because you still got the gear wine. It shifts pretty fast. The torque rating is decent. We just can't turbo the car or supercharge it and it'll work perfectly. It should be streetable. And by the time we do that, we'll have like a standalone ECU. So that'll work a lot better too. But you know, what other companies are, are out there that you guys think I should look at when it comes to straight cut gears and sequential dog box stuff? Like, do you think I should look at PPG? I couldn't find much with PPG apart from a five speed gear set. And I don't want, I don't want a five speed. I want six speed. Um, in this car only. Oh, and as you know, I ordered the uh, I ordered the first race car parts for the car. Oh, that downshift. So another benefit to getting something like the Drenth gearbox is that gear changes will be faster. Um, uh, still very consistent. Um, it'll be very similar to the SMG, but a lot better and a lot more capable of handling abuse. Um, so that'll be cool. And I'm starting to think, you know, in case you didn't know, PTG would stroke their inline sixes to 3.4 liters in their race cars. Um, and their, their engines were capable of producing uh, 480 horsepower at the crank naturally aspirated. Now that's not necessarily my goal, but 400 at the crank would be cool to be able to do that reliably in a street car. And so I thought, you know, I haven't asked Herschel how much the PTG stroker kit costs, but that's the only stroker kit I would go with. So maybe that could be a cool thing to do too. But that would be a lot of money for not a lot of power, kind of like the velocity stacks I got, like 1300 bucks for like an extra six or seven, six horsepower. I think it's one horsepower per, per velocity stack. So it's not, we're not making huge gains in power yet. And in terms of installing parts on the car, the first thing we're going to install is the new head unit, which you guys won't really be able to enjoy, um, but I will, because I'm getting very sick of listening to the radio. I'm getting super sick of listening to the radio because it's nothing but talk shows and occasional music. Because remember, this is a street car and I daily this, I drive this every day to work. This had 73,000 miles on it when I first got it, and now it's almost at 75, 75,000. Oh, hey, uh, one of my co-workers in uh, his E46 3 Series sedan is behind me. I think this is probably also gonna be the only BMW I'm ever going to buy. Despite me loving the brand of BMW, there's a lot of other cars I want to get. The R34, um, I wanna get some kind of one day, you know, this is pretty early on. I've only got 35,000 subscribers and all that good stuff. But one day I'd love to get an exotic at the supercar level, whether it's new or old, it's not a big deal, preferably with more than eight cylinders, unless if it's something like a McLaren, because McLarens are, they are good. But yeah, like something like an Aventador maybe, or a Huracan, you know, something like that. I mean, only issue with Huracans is that everybody has them. And Aventadors are very pricey, um, especially the ones I like. I like the things like the SV and all that. And I don't, I don't know if it's possible to convert like a standard LP700 into an SV, but if I can get an, L I guess if you can get an SV rear bumper, you can put an SV exhaust on the car. I don't know what else goes into making an SV an SV. I feel like there's a good amount of weight savings that also goes into it as well. So yeah. Um, I didn't really talk much this morning, so this might not be a long episode of The Commute, but we'll be talking after work as well. So I will see you guys uh, when that happens. Holy moly. I put my mask in the glove box. Oh, that was, a, that was a longer than expected day. When I picked up that route, it said 291 packages, which translated according to the itinerary 
at the beginning of the day, it said 174, 179 stops. When I finished, it said I had done 191. <laughs> I finished right. I did everything. No leftover packages, except for a cancellation and two miss sorts. Blah. I didn't have anything that I failed to deliver. Nothing that I failed to deliver. That, that was an insane route. Um, not a lot of apartments, which is why I was able to do it at all. Um, which is nice. Interesting weird fact I can't show you guys, but you can save seat positions in the car. So I have my kind of driving setup saved now, which is optimal. And it sort of saves the rear view mirrors, but it doesn't save everything there is to do with the rear view mirrors. So it will only save uh, the horizontal axis, it will not save the vertical axis when it comes to saving the, the, the position. So you want to get uh, the vertical just right and then never touch it because you're going to get very confused when you change your seat position and the mirrors are, are, are still messed up despite loading uh, predetermined settings. But uh, yeah. Also, I found the comment that I, that I was looking for. So my four reasons for uh, getting the, uh, the GTT before getting the GTR is number one, it's cheaper but would still be great for content, so there's potential profit there, also with reselling it. Number two is it will likely appreciate in value. Number three, I can sell it when I'm ready to buy a full GTR, whether it's a Series 1 standard, a V-Spec, or an M-Spec NUR if I uh, have 300 grand to spare. It's probably gonna be more like 400, 500 by then. But hey, if I have that money and I go, it's either this or like an Aventador SV, I'll get the M Spec NUR because that is closer to my heart. Um, and then number four is I can show people what can be done to a non GTR Skyline and why they are so cool. Because a lot of you are in my position who can, cannot even afford the $130,000 examples of the car. So, you know, it's good to still enjoy life and try to att attain your dream dreams, even if it's in a really creative way, like taking a non-GTR Skyline and making that as close to a GTR as possible and still having a lot of fun. Um, I'm thinking about getting a turbo kit or something. Well, we'll see. Uh, the only issue is, is the front pipe, I think has to be custom made because of the, uh, well, actually, no, it doesn't because with the RB25, it comes single turbo. So I don't think I need to get a custom front pipe. Am I right? Does anyone know? Also, I talked about the Drenth gearbox. Um, I'm actually kind of considering getting a Drenth gearbox for the S54, but do I get the gearbox before or after I do the body kit? I kind of want to do the body kit first, but it could be also cool to do the gearbox first, and the gearbox is um, cheaper than the body kit, uh, as far as I know. It would be the Drenth DSG500 or something like that. I don't think that's the exact name. Also, apparently, I, I saw an article during my break. I didn't actually read it. It was on Facebook. I should actually get going. I saw an article during my break on, on Facebook that Honda is now allowing people to buy the Type R engine as a crate motor. And I thought, okay, well, does that mean it's available to everybody now? Because originally, you had to be on a racing team rec recognized by Honda to be able to buy the Type R engine as a crate engine. But now it looks like anyone, just anyone can do that, which I think is awesome. But then again, I don't know what I would put that engine into. Here's the thing. Because if I were to do a cool Honda build, like a tasteful Honda build, I would want to get an E... Oh, sorry. Door's locked. I would want to get an EM1 1999 or 2000 Honda Civic SI Coupe, or Coupe, however it's said, and put um, the Type R motor of that car's era into it, do a couple tasteful mod suspension wheels. I could do spoon parts. <laughs> Generally keep it really clean and nice and JDM but have the, the Type R motor in there. I don't remember, it's, it's a K-series, right? Is it a K-series for the 99 to 2000 Type R? There was a Type R for that era, right? It, was, it just wasn't the Coupe, it was a, a hatchback, I thought. The EM1 Civic is one of my favorite Civics. 
but there is also uh, the, the generation that, that came before that, which is the one that was used for the uh, the heist civics and the Fast and the Furious. And if I were to build a replica car from the Fast and the Furious, that's probably the only one I would do. A black Civic uh, with green underglow. Uh, the Veil side uh, dual deck spoiler. Wouldn't be an extensive build. Maybe put a B-Series motor into it. Is it like a B-16? Is that a motor, a Honda motor? I'm not an expert. I'm not a Honda expert, believe it or not. It's, it's all Skylines and BMWs and more recently kind of McLarens. I'm trying to broaden my perspective, but it's tricky because I'm only really researching cars I'm interested in. So I know a lot about Evo 10s because back when I first uh, wanted to get a first car, uh, the Evo 10 was on my uh, dream list, but we ended up getting the WRX, uh, as you guys know, uh, mainly because the WRX had less horsepower and as such, my parents are more comfortable with that. But uh, at the dealership where we got uh, my uh, Subaru, Subaru WRX, Gilman Subaru in uh, Houston, Texas, um, they had a, I think it was a 2011 Evo 10 MR. So it wasn't even the manual with the five speed. It was the six speed paddle gearbox. That was the car I actually wanted to see. And when we got there, they said, oh, we actually sold that car yesterday. And I was like, oh, darn. I actually, believe it or not, I wanted the Evo more than the Subaru, but I ended up with the Subaru and the Subaru, 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 wow. The Subaru was a lot of fun. Um, but maybe one day I could get, I, I said this in a, I think in, in the Mod Spotlight video last week, that maybe I could get uh, an Evo 10 or an Evo 10 motor and put that into uh, an Eclipse and paint, paint it uh, Kawasaki, Kawasaki green, or get uh, a GSR Evo 10, or even a, uh, an FE, and paint that Kawasaki green. A Kawasaki green uh, Evo 10 would be kind of interesting. And, you know, maybe build it up to 400, 500 horsepower to the wheels, and have the fun Grady Type S uh, blow-off valve again. It's a build I've, I've considered doing, Evo 10 was a car I was obsessed with, um, but you guys don't know that. Like, cause I was I was obsessing over that car when I was in high school, from like 2013 all the way up to 2016 and 2017 when I got my first car. I got I got the Subaru in 2017. I believe when I was 19. Was it 2017? I think it was 2017. It wasn't 2016. I got my license in 2016. Because for those of you that don't know, I'm sure most of you do, I lived overseas for most of my life. I didn't live in the US when I was 15 or 16, so I couldn't do the whole permit thing and drive when I was super, super young. I didn't get to do that. I, I had to wait until I was 19 years old to have a car and I had to wait until I was 18 to have a license. Nice, nice thing about being 18 though, is I didn't have to do the permit stuff. I just did, I did a whole bunch of studying. That's the, it was the only time in my entire life where I was super disciplined about studying. Um, and I got a, I think it was like a 98 or 99% on the written test. And I struggled a little bit at first with uh, the practical driving with the instructor in the car, but the instructor, he was really cool. It's not a super, super interesting story. The only really, the only real highlight about me getting my license is that I had got a really good score on the written test. Um, and I think also the practical test, um, the, the actual physical driving test. Um, it's saved somewhere in my Snapchat memories, like me going, check out my awesome score. And it's in a, a hidden vlog on my old channel, Dig Digitalics, which one day we'll look at, like we'll do like a video where we go, let's watch my old cringy uh, YouTube videos from high school because I started making videos on that channel in like 2012, 2013. And oh God, I haven't really, like my voice hasn't changed all that much. I think my voice got about as deep as it could in ninth or 10th grade. And then that was it. This was my voice. I was stuck with it. So I was one of those guys that sounded like a, a sports commentator 
you know, in ninth grade. And I was in a, uh, we had a club at our high school that was school sanctioned. It was uh, like a D&D, a tabletop RPG uh, club. And so whenever I was in charge of a group, people would always crack up at my voice because it sounded like I was, it sounded so official when I didn't mean it to be. So that's a funny story. It is so fun to drive this car. It really is. I just want to get this um, head unit uh, swapped out at some point, and then we're golden. It's freaking 10, 11 p.m. Am I going to be able to record my freaking Need for Speed Underground episode tonight? I don't think I'm going to be able to record it and upload it all uh, in time for tomorrow. Uh, that would be a bit of a stretch. That I need to make sure I get some sleep. And I hate doing this. I hate postponing videos, but I might need to put it off at least one night and hope that tomorrow I get back before 10.30. You know, if I get home at like 9.30 or something, I can still record for like 30 minutes and then I can edit. But if I'm getting home at like 10.20 and I need to eat food, undress, get vaguely clean and comfortable, it's just... I'll be I'll be editing into to all the way up to two in the morning or three in the morning, and maybe even later because I'm on baby duty when it's nighttime. So usually when I'm editing videos at night, I have my eight-month-old daughter right next to me, <laughs> but I'm wearing headphones so that I can work on my stuff. But I can I can be aware of when she, you know, does something, and I can make sure she doesn't wake up Heather, which is like waking up a sleeping dragon. I can attest to the fact that she does breathe fire. But only after she gives you a really grumpy look. Like, how dare you wake me? Also, I wanted to say, so I was thinking and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the turbo I was thinking of getting, we would keep the RB25, which I think would be kind of interesting. And we could get a turbo, I th uh, it's the GTX 3582R Gen 2, I believe. And I think that's a turbo that's good for 450 all the way up to 700 horsepower at the wheels. We're not gonna go that high because then we have to upgrade a lot of other stuff. So we'll start at 450, or we could be like, hey, 420 wheel horsepower, because we don't need much right away. But I just, I, I'm trying to figure out like what exhaust manifold I want to go with. I, I could just go with the one that comes with the kit on full race, um, just to make things easy. And I like that the the parts are pretty interchangeable to interchangeable between RB25 and RB26. So if we were to do a 26 swap, we could just keep the turbo kit if we wanted to, just to be economical. Um, but I think we're going to keep the 25 for the whole lifetime of the car and just do the RB26 stuff in the uh, actual GTR, which we will get. And I still want to get that Art Audi RS3. I don't know. Like, between the Audi RS3 and the R34 GTT, I feel like the R34 would yield better results in terms of content, whereas the RS3 would be the daily that I would try not to touch too much. So I'd just wrap it do wheels and then exhaust and then that's it i wouldn't do anything very interesting whereas the r34 you know we would upgrade some of the internals you know uh cams crankshafts pistons rods uh we do the turbo kit and all sorts of other stuff and we do the exterior maybe even paint it uh it, it, it would be a much more complete build and i think the car would get you know, I'm, I'm a, a better and more positive response. Whereas the RS3 is kind of like, it would be a background car. It could be the star of these videos, but I don't know if I really want to take that from this car. Okay, 10, 17 PM. No backing in today. I just want to go inside. Hopefully it's warm because it's a little, it's a little chilly. It's getting warmer. It's been like in the fifties pretty consistently these last few days. So I'm not going to complain about the weather because it's been nice and warm and I love it. It was a little rainy today, but you know. All right. Well, 
Thank you all so much for watching today's episode of The Commute. The car is beeping at us. If you like what you have seen so far and you're not subscribed yet, make sure to fix that because if you like what you've seen so far, then you'll love what I've got planned. Let, let's, let, let's just make that super duper clear. Anyways, I am Tom the Racing Joker. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.